What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 99. Got you on tons of different screens. So if I'm looking up and down, it's because I have you all over the place on the Twittergrams, the, the MySpaces, the Instagrams, YouTubes, Facebooks, all that stuff. So look around the different cameras. This is Steve Says, episode number 99. Almost to 100. Episode number 99. Today we're going to talk about 10 things, 10 preparations and lessons that were learned during the recent traveling that I've done around the country and around the world. And whether it's for work, for vacation, long-term, short-term, this is the stuff that you might sometimes maybe don't necessarily want to hear, but the shit you're going to need to hear on how to operate in your life so you can operate to dominate in all areas of your life. This week's episode, we're talking about asking these kind of questions to yourselves. Do you plan ahead while traveling? Do you, do you let traveling throw you off your daily structure, your routine, your work, your schedule, your health, your fitness, your nutrition? Do you, let, do you let traveling turn you into a douchebag is really one of the questions that I have here. And on, on, on the flip side of that, do you let your work and your career turn you into a douchebag or an asshole like some people do, especially in the travel industry? We're going to get into all that here in a second. As you know, we tell it like the, the truth, the realness of what it is straight real and raw. That's what Steve says is all about. And, and then also, do you get anxiety and stress and impatient, especially dealing with all the other stressed out and anxious and impatient civilians and workers? This is what we're going to talk about today on Steve Says, episode number 99. As you know, Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so that you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms. That's what it's all about. We're focusing on the mind, the body, and your business. The business of you. The business of your life. Having a role model mindset. How to operate to dominate in your discipline, your energy, your confidence. To become an action taker and be your freak mother freaking self. That's what we're talking about. Adapting and overcoming. Trusting the process. And of course... Having a no excuses mindset. This is what Steve says is all about. The invasion's coming. It's here. And this is what we're preparing for you all the time. So let's let's get into this. Some of the lessons and preparations that you need to have when it comes to travel. Travel, whether it's for fun, for business, for work, vacation, short-term trip, long-term trip, whatever it is, this stuff is going to apply. So first of all, we're, we're going to get to the practical stuff, the actual what, how to prep, how to prepare ahead of time. But let's jump right into how you should, the mindset you need to have when you're going into traveling. You need to have the mindset going into any kind of traveling that you're not going to let this throw you off your fucking routine, off your schedule, off your rhythm, the rhythm that you have in dominating motherfucking life. You cannot let traveling and what's the point of, of all right, so a business trip. Or what's the point of a vacation if it's going to completely fuck up your whole routine and throw you off and dig you so deep in a hole that it's going to take you months to dig out of it when you get back to work or back into the flow. If if you just think about these, it's it's the P's. You know we love the word P here on on, on the, the Steve Says Show. You see peak physique. We talk about peak performance, peak potential, peak physique. We're talking about when you're traveling, you need to practice patience, perspective, and positivity. That's the way you need to think when you're traveling. When you're out of your normal element. Like when I'm not out of the office here. I don't want to be thrown so far off. It's bad enough to not have your exact routines and exact setup. And the exact uh, computer and everything. Knowing where everything is. You need to plan for that stuff ahead of time. So you need to plan and practice patience, perspective, and positivity. So first of all, what better way to work on your patience than to go traveling. To go on a trip. What better way? Because you know you're going to have to wait in line at the airports. Then you're going to have flights that are delayed. You're going to have all this other stuff. And you're going to have to be patient. You just have to wait. Because you have no other choice but to wait until that plane takes off. You have no other choice but to be patient when there's a delay and you miss your flight. A funny thing about a a, a delayed flight. We had a, we had a, a delayed flight. And so we heard that the flight was delayed because someone was refusing to put on their mask. So they had a, a flight before us was delayed. So it pushed back our layover, made us miss a flight and have to stay overnight, find a hotel at midnight, 
Then the, the reservations were all fucked up on the hotel because they're supposed to cover it for you. All that stuff. Finding it a, a, an Uber for for four people and seven, eight pieces of luggage at about midnight to go find a hotel room that has a, a room with a hotel close enough to the airport to then catch a flight the next day on a different airline. That's going to require some other fucking patience. But that's what you need to think of it. Like, thank God this happened to me so I can practice this patience that, you know, we, we study personal development. You do all this other stuff. This is your chance to, to demonstrate it, to fucking practice it. When you're traveling, think of that. Like traveling, it's just, it, happen, you, it happens all the time. It's a perfect opportunity for you to practice your patience, to practice your perspective and the way you're looking at things. Like think about it, just that perspective of thinking, all right, this shit is all fucked up. I'm going to now practice having patience. Like I, I, you're, you're posting all your Instagrams and your bullshits and your quotes and all these pictures and all this motivational shit. But then when you're the one in line that just got fucked over and now you have to lay over a, a flight, you're the one that's going to be a douchebag to that person up at the counter at the customer service has to deal with hundreds, thousands of, of yous every day. And you're just having, you're having, you're worried about your own situation and they're going to be a douchebag to this person behind the counter with their little scarf on and all that other stuff. Besides the fact, imagine you get up there and you're not being that rude douchebag, but you're getting treated like the rest of the rude douchebags by a rude customer service person. This is what happened. I'm there practicing patience. All right, this is going to be a perfect chance for you to practice the patience that I'm always, where we preach and we study and we read about it in Stoic philosophy and all this other stuff. You get fucked over, you delay enough thing, you're with kids and luggage and you have to find a hotel, you have to find another flight, another airline the next day and all this stuff going on like at midnight, in the middle of the night, you got to figure this shit out. You get up, it's your, finally you're online for over an hour and a half because there's so many people that got fucked over also. So it's your time to get up there. You're very polite, courteous, calm, because you're practicing your patience. And then you have this rude, rotten, fucking angry human being up there in front, uh, talking to you like you're a, a, a mutt. And like, all right, look at this, even better. Thank God this, is, this person's just being a fucking bitch because I get a chance to even practice even more patience, to build up that muscle of controlling yourself, controlling your emotions, controlling your perspective, the way you're thinking about it, and continuing to be able to demonstrate how to be patient. Like, prove to yourself it's not just bullshit. Like, that's what the perspective you have to have on, on this shit. Otherwise, what are you going to do? All those people that are screaming and cursing out this, this person behind the counter, that's why she's treating me like a fucking mutt because of the 30 people in front of her that all cursed her out in a row. Like, what did that do for them? That didn't get them their next flight any sooner or their hotel any sooner. If anything, it delayed that. And if anything on top of that, it's not going to make her go out of her way to help them. Like giving some extra vouchers for meals or shuttles or extra upgrades in hotel rooms or upgrades on their next flight. You think she's going to go out of her way to give them an upgrade to first class? Because I've had first class tickets where there was a delay, missed the layout, missed the flight, missed the, the, the connecting flight and lost the first class ticket and had to not sit in first class. What are you going to do about it? You could sit and bitch and complain and you could say, what are you going to do? You're going to wait two extra days just to get first class ticket or you're going to just eat it and, and ride the fucking thing. It's, it's all perspective. It's all just practicing this shit. It's all doing the, the shit that, we, that you, you preach about and you talk about and actually demonstrating it in the real world, in real fucking situations. Like, boo fucking who? You lost your first class ticket. Boo fucking who? You have to stay overnight in a nice hotel. Boo fucking who? You have to wait an extra day on vacation. Because this stuff wouldn't matter if you were prepared ahead of time. We're going to go backwards and talk about how to prepare ahead of time. If you had the right things with you, you wouldn't worry about it. Oh, just another day. It doesn't matter. I could do this shit from anywhere in the world. It doesn't fucking matter. I could stay here for another month and I'll be prepared for it. Is that ideal? Is that optimal? Fuck no. You want to, you want to get home. You want to get in your own routine, your own rhythm, your own motherfucking bed. But this is how you do it. You need to, to, to actually put into play the shit that you're studying, the shit that you're preaching about. All this other stuff. And then you, on top of that, so the, and then this goes on. Uh, the rude woman or person, doesn't matter if there's a man or a woman, don't want to offend anybody or if they associate with the woman or a man, don't know, never know these days. So this, this rude human being fucking bitching at me about it, and I'm the one that sh technically should be mad, but she's been dealing with a bunch of fucking people the whole day, so treat me like a fucking mutt, and I could just sit there and be calm and smooth and courteous and please and thank you and just try to get on with it so I could just get to the next stage. And then think about it. So you miss, it's all, it's, it really is all perspective. You miss, you miss a flight, whatever it is, everything's going wrong. Now it's, it's midnight 
you get to the hotel and they have no rooms. They, the, the reservation didn't go through the right way from the airline. They're supposed to cover it. They're supposed to hook it up for you, send the reservation, and it didn't work for you. So you're sitting there now for an hour in the lobby of the hotel room. Yes, perfect. A more, more of a chance to practice my breathing, my controlling of my fucking emotions. This is like making me a better fucking human. This is like as high a level as personal development you could possibly have. Like dealing with shit like this, especially if it's not even that fucking serious. Big deal. A flight layover that you're having coming back from a fucking 10-day 10, 10 vacation in, in Costa Rica and all different parts of the country and all different parts of the world. Boo fucking who. Your flight got delayed. You got to spend a night in Denver. Who gives a fuck? Like, think of how little and small and not serious that is. And then you're stressing about it and now they're not getting a hotel room. Then finally they come through at like one in the morning. They, right, we got a room for you. Their reservations panned out. It worked out. Here's your room key. Now think about it. You get that room key. On that day that you now you know you have to stay there where you're so pissed about, but now it's like just such a relief, that little victory. Like that's how you think about, it. yes, we got a room, we're gonna go to room, it's gonna be great, we're gonna wake up in the morning, get a workout in. Fucking perspective, motherfuckers. You got to you gotta think of it. Stop bitching and moaning. Boo-hoo, poor little you. Things are just not going your way in life, especially when most of the shit that's not going your way is not even that big of a deal. You just are weak-minded and, and having a trouble dealing with these little things or things that don't go your way. Shit's not gonna go your way. I can't control if that fucking pilot doesn't want to take off because someone didn't put on their face diaper. And get this. So the, the, we, we, we missed all this happened because supposedly someone wouldn't, supposedly, this is how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why supposedly. Someone didn't put on their fucking face diaper. Someone didn't put on their face diaper or, or wouldn't keep it on. So they delayed the flight and had to remove that person off the flight. And the reason why I say supposedly wouldn't put it on, because now we're finally, the next day I went through, we went through all this stuff. And finally get on a flight to head back from, from Denver to California. That's a short flight. Have to have a layover because that's all that was available in Phoenix. So we're on Denver getting ready to go to Phoenix. When that stupid face diaper's on, the only time I wear a face diaper is on the plane. Face diaper's on, right? So I have it down. The flight, we're just packing our stuff in the bags, or the, uh, you know, before the flight takes off. Getting our stuff in the overhead, the under the seats, getting my books out and stuff. While I'm doing that, I'm eating my little uh, protein bar. Or is actually protein chips. Quest protein chips. While I'm doing that, obviously I'm chewing and putting a chip in while I'm doing this moving around, getting the kids situated, the stewardess, or whatever you can call it. I don't know. You know, you can't inf you offend them if you call them stewardesses too. I don't know. Is it a stewardess? It's a fucking stewardess. I really don't give a fuck. The stewardess says, you gotta cover your face with the mask. I'm like, okay, no problem. I'm eating. She's like, well, you gotta cover your face. So I'm like, fuck it. I shove a bunch of the fucking quest chips in my mouth, like a whole handful, because I need my hands free anyway to do this shit. Put the little face diaper on. And I'm chewing it. And now we're starting to get ready to take off. I sit down in the seat. And this fucking bitch, I mean stewardess, says, no, we're not good for takeoff when they do the flight checks or whatever. She makes the plane stop because while I was chewing it, the face diaper, my nose is exposed. And I got a big honker. It's hard to get a face diaper to control this fucking honker. You see the size of this thing? There's not many face diapers out there that stay on it if I'm chewing a bunch of food. And I'm a chomper. I'm chomping away on my Quest chips, trying to rush it in while I'm moving things around, then sit down, and I'm still chewing on it under. I'm having to chew with this fucking thing on my face. Imagine that shit. And it creeps down below my nose. She's like, that's the second time I had to tell you, sir, stop the plane. She stops a motherfucking plane. And because right before that, one of the kids' face diapers came down to nose, and she told them. So now she's like, this is the third time I'm having to tell your family. She brings this... This, this, this guy on the plane and she has like this like broad shoulder guy and she comes on the plane and this guy says, and she's like, you know, I could have you arrested. I could pull you off this plane. You, this, you shouldn't have to be told twice, like talking to like, you're just a complete fucking mutt. Like you're a complete mutt. Like motherfucker. Like only because we don't want to get kicked off a plane. You have to sit there and just conform and just nod your head and bow and kiss their fucking ass and lick their fucking crusty toes because you don't want to go up there. That's like what the, what the world is trying to make the, make humans is just be submissive little fucking sheep and just bow to the fucking broad shouldered man, man, man child, whatever the fuck it was that came on there. Like crazy shit. This is like the direction the world's going. And these people feel like they're doing their part. They feel like they're serving their country. Motherfucker, go join the military you want to serve your country. Harassing a fucking family, threatening me they're going to take me to jail and telling me if they see anyone's nose on our, in our family during the flight, this is only an hour and 20 minute flight from Denver to Phoenix. They say during that flight, that hour and 20 minute flight, if any of our noses of our family are exposed, they're going to do an emergency landing and have me arrested 
for my fucking hunger showing. Can you, this is, this is, this is fucking crazy. And I realize this is why we missed our layer and the other one, because they did the same thing fucking with another person like this. It's hard to contain this honker. This thing, look at this thing. It's fucking gigantic. It's ginormous. We got a family of fucking honkers. What can we do about it? Anyway, more of a chance to practice patience and control. And even on top of that, even more than that, the next level that I haven't even talked about of practicing is fucking gratitude. Like, think about it. Thank God I'm not one of those people that are, are need to feel like I'm doing my due diligence and my sharing my, my work in society by fucking harassing people for a tip of their nose, their big ass nose sticking out. Thank God it's, it's other people and not me that are thinking like that and are so fucking weak minded. Thank God I can handle this, that I was built for this, that I practice this, that I can handle this and have the patience and the perspective and the positivity to just laugh this off. And get on with fucking life and go back to just kicking ass, impacting people's lives, impacting the world, transforming minds and bodies and businesses. Thank God, like you think of that, that gratitude, thank God that I'm on this end of it, the side that's getting abused and not the abuser. Think about that. Think about that. Like, or uh, this has nothing to do with the travel, but just to think of gratitude, how to switch perspective. This really is not just about travel. This is about perspective and practicing perspective. We've had people that have tried to rip us off in business before. The people that try to get refunds for services they did, they try to get refunds because they heard the people get refunds. They could just get refunds. Their bank will just give them their money back. And so they do it and they go through it and they, they sue you and tell a sob story. You say, they say, you have more money than I do. So you should have to give me my money back even though I use your services or, or bought your product. You should have to give me your money back. Like, why, motherfucker? Why? But then after that, like, all right, and a judge is always going to usually side with the, the whining, bitching person. So they're going to, they, 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 we had this actually happen. And we had to pay back like a, a 30% of the money or something. Of Should have been zero, we paid back 30%. But I thought, all right, I could sit and bitch and complain. We lost whatever, a few hundred bucks, a few thousand dollars, whatever the hell it was. But instead I say, thank God I'm on the side that people are trying to rip off and not the ones doing the ripping off. Just like, thank God, I'm on the side that's getting harassed in a fucking plane by some douchebag in front of my kids threatening to arrest, threatening to arrest me and do an emergency landing with my kids there, worried that we're going to have to wait another fucking couple of days to get home after we've already been stuck laid over because of their fucking horrible service in the first place. Thank God I'm on that end and not that end. Thank God I, I have the, the strength and the control of my emotions and I'm not the, the, on the douchebag side. Thank God. Be grateful. Like this is this is practice and gratitude. You start thinking, like that. That's the, per, the way you got to flip the script to just survive to not start snapping motherfuckers' necks. It's it's a, a huge way to practice it. In when and, and traveling is just gives you so many opportunities because it, it, traveling just fucking sucks half the time. The actual travel just sucks. It just does. So practicing patience, perspective, planning, positivity, controlling your emotions, practicing just to shut the fuck up. Because as, when, the, when this man walked over and she's got, she's got like these big broad shoulders and he's like, I'm going to get you arrested and pull you off this plane, emergency crash landing. All I have to do is say, all right, as much as I want to argue with this person because they're fucking completely out of line and rude and disrespectful motherfucker. I want to take my elbow and just like slash it across their fucking face. As much as I would love to do that to, to him. Thank God I'm, I'm, I'm on this side and not where she is. And... And, and it's a perfect opportunity to practice shutting up. Even when you know 100% you have a valid argument. You are right. You are just being abused. Sometimes you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Pick and choose your battles. Because if I would, and they know they have so much control, that's the only reason they can they act like that. It gives them a, a feeling of significance, importance in their otherwise miserable lives. Like they need to find some other fulfillment in life other than just fucking with people like there's people out there just live to fuck with people thank god you're on the other end thank god i could find humor in it and laugh about it and make jokes about it thank god i could find the positive side of everything and just keep marching the fuck on thank god that's what it's all about that's what it's all about thank god i'm not the spiteful stewardess thank god i'm not the one harassing someone that their fucking honker tipped out of their nose for like a quarter of a second for a quarter of an inch well, maybe more than a quarter of it. Look at that thing from the side. Look at that thing. It's fucking crazy. 
Thank God. Thank God that you're you're not on the side. Because listen, people are fucking weak. They're miserable. And I understand. They're overwhelmed. They've been through a lot. The airlines have been through a lot. So they're going to be super strict. But you don't got to be a fucking douchebag. You don't got to be a douchebag and try to pull some power. Like I've had, I've had, in the Marine Corps, there, there were guys, people like that. They just wanted to pull power, pull rank. They call it pulling rank on someone. Be like, listen, you, you can pull rank on me all you want, but th- that, that, those, those bars on your, or not bars, those, those stripes on your collar are not going to help you out when I'm whooping your ass, okay? It's just not going to help you. So think about it. Uh, this, this is just, I understand people are overwhelmed. They, they're out of, they were out of work. The, the airlines are shut down. Everyone's dealing with that shit. But thank God I'm on the side of, of people who, are contr- I understand they're going through shit and they don't know how to cope with the complexity and the craziness and the chaos of the world. Luckily, it happened to me. Luckily, it happened to me and we study it. We practice it. We demonstrate it. We prepare for this shit. Luckily that I, I think of it, all right, this is my time to shine, my time to step up, my time not to fucking break, my time to stay in the motherfucking green, if you know what that means. That's what you have to think about. Think about this as your opportunity to be the energy that you want, be the, the confidence that you want, be the controlled, the, the, the uh, emotional controlled person in the room. Stand out for that. Not the fucking idiot that's losing their shit, stopping a motherfucking plane because a kid's nose is stuck out while they're chewing. It doesn't even matter why. Like, think about it. Be that energy that you want to, to see and you want to talk about. What's the point of posting shit and quoting shit and teaching and reading and studying and learning if you don't fucking practice it yourself and you don't demonstrate it yourself in the real world, in real situations? Especially easy shit like this. This is just travel. Fucking easy. Imagine a real life or death situation. This is just building up the muscles and getting the reps in for when you really need to call on it for real areas of life. Be the one cracking jokes and not letting this situation or letting fucking douchebag stewardesses or asshole fucking broad-shouldered customer service people drag you down. Be the one to lift up the situation. Be the one to, to not just be a, a douchebag in every situation. And listen, I slip up. I say stupid shit. I fucking snap here and there. A lot more there and here. I, I, we all do it. But catch yourself. Catch yourself when you're saying stupid shit and cut that shit off. When you're being that ass, that, that fucking douchebag. So, all right, so let's go now rewind. How do you prepare to be able to deal with this stuff so it doesn't affect you? So I don't have to think, oh my God, I'm going to be stuck for another day here in Denver, a day and a half. How am I going to work? How am I going to eat? How am I going to work out? How? Because I fucking prepared for it. That's why. When you're traveling, make, pack, pack your food, pack your supplements, pack your vitamins, pack your, I, I bring ready to drink protein shakes, protein powders, supplements, vitamins, Enough for like double or triple the time that I'm going to be there. Enough workout clothes, extra pair of sneakers in case they get wet or running sneakers and workout sneakers, tons of extra socks. I'll even check in and pay for an extra bag at the airport on the plane if you have to. Just for my food and training gear. I also have a training bag that has bands and sliders and TRX in it and jump rope and stretch strap and a foam roller that I always travel with. I will pay for an extra bag just to put that in there, all my food, all my supplements, even drinks, hydration. So no matter what, no matter where I get stuck for no matter how long, I'm fucking good. I'm fucking good. I'm packing my reading several different books. I'll bring like a fucking shitload of books in me. I'm carrying a heavy ass. I'm getting a workout just carrying my luggage. I'm bringing motivational books. I'm bringing my journals. Also, before going, going on my computers and tablets, having a backup of all the files I need to work on, making them all available offline, bringing extra chargers, extra batteries, extra everything, anything I need. Then seeing where we're going to be, finding a hotel that has a gym, even though I'm bringing my own equipment as a backup. There's a backup plan to a backup plan. There's a, a plan A, B, C, all the way to motherfucking Z. Finding where's the nearest grocery store that we need to get food near the hotel. Having, knowing exactly what's going on, planning and preparing ahead of time for this shit. So these douchebag motherfuckers out there in the world that are conspiring against you because they're all out there. They're all out there. Those miserable fucks are out there that they don't let them drag you down. Don't let them throw you off your fucking A-game. Because if you're always on your A-game, you never have to get on your A-game. If you're always prepared, you never have to get prepared. If you always bring the motherfucking fire, you don't have to go and generate the fire because you're already always bringing it. You're not one of those weak, miserable fucks that we're talking about. So... And, and that's just preparing ahead of time. But then also, you're on vacation. You know when you're on vacation, you're going to dig yourself in a hole with your workouts, dig yourself in a hole with your nutrition, dig yourself in a hole with your business. It's fucking stupid. 
you train and, and you, you save up all this money and bust your ass and work to be able to go on this vacation to then just dig yourself in a hole. It's going to take you fucking months to dig out of. What I do is, is even on vacation, if you want to call it, I don't even call it a vacation. It's, it's just working somewhere else, operating somewhere else. Cause every day is a fucking vacation. I love, I live it and love it every day. Every day is a motherfucking vacation. Today's a Tuesday afternoon. It is a motherfucking vacation. I'll plan. I'll know exactly what time I'm going to work out every day, where I'm going to work out, what equipment is going to be in the gym, is it going to be outside, is it going to be in the hotel room, is it going to be with my equipment, is it going to be a run, whatever it is, what clothes I'm going to wear, what sneakers I need, I have my supplements, I'll know exactly what I'm going to work, where I'm going to work out, I'll know exactly where I'm going to eat at different parts of the day while traveling, so I'm going to eat a bunch of shit and a bunch of fucking desserts, have some motherfucking discipline when you're traveling. I'll also have time blocks of when I'm going to work. I may not work as many hours a day. Definitely not. We're on vacation with the kids, whatever. We're doing a lot of kind of activities. But I'm still going to put my fucking kill time, my two hours of work in the morning. After my little morning routine, I'll get my morning routine done every fucking morning, even on vacation. Get up earlier than I need to so I can get my little morning routine in. My meditation, my gratitude, my journaling, my reading. It all gets done even on during traveling, even on business trips, even during the fucking project. It gets done. And then there's a time block, a kill time for work, to get work done. The most important things that need to get done that day, whether it's an hour, 90 minutes, or two hour time block, depending on the day or what's scheduled for that day on the trip, that gets done. That kill time gets done. So I know I got the most important things done for the day that even if I am, am doing all kinds of activities the rest of the day, I got my whole morning routine done. I have my workout accounted for. I know what my nutrition, I'm gonna be eating, have a nutritional discipline, and then also know that I've gotten the most important things done for work and for business and for moving the needle and money making during that day. I'll also know what times if I have, ske- have scheduled calls or coaching calls with, with, with coaching clients or, or sales calls to, to sell people, sell men the project, to get them on board with the project, interview calls. I'll know what time those are and I'll plan accordingly. I'll plan some events here, put a block of calls here, plan some more events here on vacation, go ATVing, zip lining, we did horseback riding underwater fucking swimming where your ears fucking popped like crazy, all that stuff. But put those calls at certain spots and just make it be known and communicate, set those boundaries. All right, we're going to go and do all this for all these hours. We're going to have a blast. That's why we worked so hard. We're gonna, it, it costs money, obviously, to do. But then I'm going to take this hour and a half year to break off and go to these calls. Then we're going to come back after that and do this. I'm going to make another call. And after that, we're going to be good for the night. We're going to hang out, watch a movie, go to dinner. It all works out. Like, set fucking boundaries. This is called personal freedom and setting boundaries and motherfucking discipline. That's what it's about. Sticking to your structure. Sticking to your routine. It's going to be a a tweaked routine, but it still has the same concept. You're not missing a beat. So when I had to stay an extra day in Denver, it was like business as usual. I know I'm going to get my workout in. I'm going to get my work done. I'm going to get my coaching calls in with coaching clients. I'm going to get my project interview calls in for candidates for the project. I'm going to make it happen no fucking matter what because it's all planned for. It's prepared for. It's all about practicing and planning, perspective, patience, and positivity. Anyway, I got to get rolling. What's up? We have some comments here on the Instagrams and the Facebooks. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, want to add anything into this, any experiences you had with traveling that were fun, that give you an opportunity or some crazy shit you've seen because we saw some crazy shit during this travel time. People lose their fucking minds there. What what are you going to go and travel for and go on vacation? There's going to be a a miserable fucking douchebag the whole time. On both the civilian side and the worker customer service side. Both sides in the travel world, the people doing the traveling and the people administering administering the service of travel are like two worlds of douchebags clashing together. Like just don't even fucking travel. It's not even worth it. It's caused you that much stress and anxiety. Quit your fucking job. Go find another job. Find a better job. Like you know that's what your job is going to be. Go there with a fucking smile. Go there with a fucking good attitude every day. Put in some fat maximum fucking effort in everything you do. Quit bullshitting. Quit being the fucking sourpuss. Quit being a miserable fucking prick. Find some other fulfillment in your life. Find something to get excited about in your calendar. Anyway, I got to get rolling. If you have any questions, comments, want to add anything to this, put it down in the comments. If you want to talk about how we can help you out with your mindset, with your body, your nutrition to achieve peak performance, Uh, your peak potential, and your peak physique, send me a message. We can do some one-on-one private accountability coaching in your mind, your body, and your business so you're operating on optimal levels with full accountability, one-on-one coaching. Also, if you want information about the project, we can hop on the call, see if you're a good fit to join the Modern Day Night Brotherhood. 
I gotta get rolling. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.